Hi, it's Karen from Lion Gate Farm. And today I am going to teach you how to felt this little cat ornament. It's Christmas is coming. It's a great little item if you're doing bazaars. Um, they're pretty fun, so let's get started. Okay, so today we are gonna make this cute little cat ornament. And the reason we're making this is because everybody always asks me at my bazaars, do you have any cats? So I developed this cute little cat ornament and it's fairly simple. You know, cats, cats are notoriously hard. Um, but I developed this simple little guy and we'll go from there. I have these on a twine hanger. You can put them on anything. He has a cute little twine bell here. We're gonna use a ribbon. So we're gonna do one with a red hat. I'm gonna use the same color scheme and let me show you how easy this is to do. Um, you'll go, oh, okay. So first we're gonna make his body. A body, it's, it's just a little disc of core wool and then we'll make his head, another little disc of core wool. So that, and when I say little, I want you to do it thin. So let's start with the body part. So it's going to end up about three and a half by two and a half oval. Three and a half by two and a half oval. So I'm using core wool. Let me go, wait, I'll go through what I need. You need core wool. I have got, um, this color is called mouse. This is dark fawn. Um, this is raven black for the details. A little bit of this blue, which is called water for his eyeballs. A little bit of the merino sparkle glitter stuff for his hat. And then we'll make his hat out of red. Um, I have a little teeny piece of blue face. It's a little bit darker that I'm going to use around his nose. So just a little darker brown. So that is, you don't need too much. I have a ruler. I have a skewer. I have some blush. Oh, I have a piece of this red, green, and white ribbon cording. I found this at Hobby Lobby. It's pretty cool that I put a bell on. So we'll use that. And then I do the little freckles with the Sharpie. So let's get started. So first we're gonna make this little disc, little piece of core wool. You don't wanna make this too thick. So we're going for that size. Um, I think I can upload a little PDF for you onto the Liongate Farm felting group. And basically I'm just giving this some shape. Like I said, this is a pretty fast little project until you get to the face. I don't have it felted too hard. It's firm but it's not too hard. So we're just gonna felt along. Give this some shape. And like I said, this is pretty simple. It's kind of a fun one. I just like to make sure it's going to hold together before I add the color on it. And I'm comparing it to this, but again, measurements for you guys. So three and a half by two and a half. You don't even really need to worry about these edges too much because we're going to cover it. And we can actually do that now. So I like to use the, the fawn. This is the dark fawn. This is Corydale Sliver, so it felt super fast. You know how I always talk about that. And I'm drafting it out a little because it's we don't need it super thick. And we're just going to wrap our little body. You can see what's going to happen is our body's going to get a little bit bigger. We're starting in on our little Christmas creative projects for you, holiday projects, winter projects. OK, 
came back from Oregon Flock and Fiber this last weekend. It was a good weekend. My ram got champion ram. He got best fleece. It's really easy to do when you're the only ram in the ring. But you know what? I'll take a win anywhere. And he did get best flock because, oh yeah, we were the only flock of blue face. But hey, he, he did good. And he was good enough for me to take in the ring. He was good. He was good. Now my little my little girls that we took, by the end of the weekend they were halter trained. Good thing my friends were helping me. We saw lots of our fiber friends. We stayed in a cockroach laden rotel. It was it was not fun. Cockroach in my bed. You know, just things that happen when you're traveling. Needless to say, we will not stay in that hotel ever again. But there was very few hotels because everybody was all excited about the eclipse. Because Albany, Oregon, where we were, it was supposed to be like the best spot to see them. Well, guess what? It was foggy. So then everybody was mad. <sighs> Some of my friends saw it, though. Okay, so we got that little piece all covered. And you can, this is up to you. You can keep covering it. You can keep stabbing it until it's perfectly smooth. Right now, it looks like a hash brown. You have one hash brown. Doesn't that look like a hash brown can? <laughs> it's an uncooked one. It looks like a hash brown. But you can see it's the right size. So now we're going to go into the head. So now you need to make a little round circle. This guy got a little fat. Um, two and a half by two. So we need a little core wool. Like I said, this is the easy part that we're doing right now. Yep. So you can see I just fold it in on itself. Let's fold it in until I get basically the shape I want. And then I'm gonna tack it. And I'm using my needle to make it go a little bit more ovally. You can use your multi-tool if you have one. Not the pen tool, the one that has seven needles. But I just use the pen tool. I'm working up some cute little holiday ornaments for you. Right now is a really good time of year to get parts. For your creations because there's all kinds of little Christmas miniature stuff out there like different color bells and hats and all kinds of little things I went to Hobby Lobby the other day for one thing and I ended up with like 100 things but isn't that what always happens Okay, so we got him all, now let's get him all colored in. We are going to just cover his head with the fawn to start with. That's what we've covered both of these with. And you can see I just wrapped it around, I'm just felting it on. Our goal here is to make a mini, a mini, what you call it? See, losing words. If 
you guys are ordering on the website, you may notice that there is a few colors that are out of stock. Those are on order. They will be in ASAP and back in stock. That just happened. Okay, so we have this mini guy, his head. So now we're going to start adding some color. So let's start with the body before we do the head, because the head's going to go right here. And we are going to, I like to put a few little stripies in there. So I'm going to switch colors. I'm going to the little mouse color. And I just take a little bit of fibers. You don't want to do too much because you want it subtle. Think about how your cats are marked. And, you know, you don't have to use these brown colors that I'm using. These are kind of like Siamese inspired since I have a cat that kind of thinks he's Siamese. So if you just do them lightly, you have like the suggestion of colors. And now let's attach his head. This guy's head is a little bit more oval than I would like. So I'm gonna stab it in. And see how loose I've left this? I left it loose for a reason. Because I wanna use it. Now I want his head to be at an angle. You know how cats sit there and look at you. I left this loose so that I can use it to attach it to his body. And I am felting all the way through that headpiece. So as you keep doing these little steps, things get tighter and tighter. Now, you get back here, we're gonna, you're going, oh, I got this line. So let's take a piece of fawn and we're just gonna make that line disappear. So now he has his head attached to his body. And if you still like you think his head's too big, you can just poke in the sides like I am. I'm going to poke this side in a little bit more. So now we got to kind of plan out where his facial features are going. So first, let's put on his ears. You are going to make, now, since he's kind of Siamese, I'm going to make him his ears out of the mouse color. We're going to take two pieces. They're about an inch. Just make two little stacks. And you know how I like to do these side by side. I'm going to draw triangles. I'm drawing the ears in the wool. And then I'm going to fold it in along that line, leave it in the leave this fringe down here. Fold it in. I like to do them at the same time so they're kind of the same size. All right, so you, you flip these guys over just like we always do for ears or any little part, leaving that fringe alone. We're going to use that to attach them. Now I like their ears to be a little darker. At the tips, remember I said I, I brought a little teeny bit of blue face that's darker. So I'm gonna add that up here at the tip. Just a tiny touch of it. This is kind of the back of the ear, but it'll go through because I'm poking it all the way through. guy doesn't feel fat enough so I'm adding a little bit more you know you, you this is all about feel you guys needle felting is feeling and if you kind of know what you need by how it feels You're pushing the wool around push it into what you want so we are going to take this these two little ears and 
one is going to go on this side, obviously. Kind of here at the angle. And one's going to go on this side. Let's just attach them on. Now we're going to work it a little bit. So that's dark. The back of his head is light. I'm going to add a piece right here of the light. Kind of build out his head. You can see his head's getting a little fat here. That's okay. Let's felt this in. You can see how it's all becoming one with his body. Now let's work these ears a little bit. We want to get this really solid. So we're going to add a little piece. I want it to come down on just a little fringe onto the head. So this is a little bit semi 2D. It's not 3D very much, but it's 2D. Cause we're gonna make these ears stand up just a little bit by working this in. You can see I'm cupping the ear a little bit, felting down in here. See how that's looking like a cat ear? Let's take just a touch of black. Add some shading. Might have been a little too much. Let's just cover it up a little bit. Remember, you can always add. Can't take away very well unless you use scissors. I did recently. A friend of mine did it recently. She cut the whole face off of something. It was kind of creepy. And she had this little face. <laughs> we were like, what are you going to do with that? <laughs> it was pretty funny. She put it on the next project, but still, it was like a face transplant. So now we're going to work on this one. See, I'm pushing it over with my finger. Don't stab your fingers. You can see how we're starting to get depth of color in the face by letting that fringe go down in. Keep peeling it off your pad and put, put it back. Just do a little bit more in the back. Just like the other side, we want to cup it a little bit. Like I said, it's not true 3D, but it's kind of 2D. Let's see if I can get the amount of black right on this side. There really is no wrong amount. Do the same thing I did over there, add a little bit of this. It's just giving that little dark outline around the top of his ear. So now what you want to look at is this area right here. We're going to add this. You don't want a ton. We're just going to shade in some of the dark. Maybe a little bit more. You can actually take it and all the way up to the top of the head. Just so you have this little dark spot right here. 
this is where we're going to build the face. I learned a new eyeball technique I've yet to try, but it sounds kind of fun, so I might have to teach you guys how to do it. So now I want you to look at this head at your center. Center is here. Let's, this is where it gets persnickety. What we're doing right now is I'm drawing a line. So I'm gonna give you a measurement. So my head is two and a quarter. My line is at about an inch down. This is the nose. I'm kind of curving it a little bit, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna come down and draw this little mouth. Right now we're just drawing with the needle, no fiber. I just want you to, you felted your head enough that it will start to sculpt like this. If you're getting, if you know you've felted it enough, if you can get these indents. Because by doing this, we're getting little cheeks. And he has a little smile. And then there's the nose. So let's take some black and fill this in. It will, it should automatically make that nose shape. Remember, it's not a race. The devil's in the details. Go nice and slow and get the face you want. If you think you screwed it up and you don't like it, just put some wool over it and start over. There is no wrong way. Do you see how that dark shading in there gave us the mouth? See, I don't like that this is not curving, so I'm going to come in here. Push the wool that way, the way I want the curve of his mouth to go. Remember, it's about pushing your wool, telling it what to do. So now we have a face. We have some. If you take, if you take your needle, the corner of the nose to the tip of the ear, corner of the nose to the tip of the ear should go right through the eyeball. So corner of the nose to the tip of the ear right through the eyeball. That should give you pretty good placement for your eyeballs. Now you can draw your eyes and make an indent. You don't really have to, but I like to do that. Just so I, I kind of know where they're gonna go. So, and this is pretty simple. You're just gonna take a little piece of blue. Remember, tip of the ear, tip of the nose. Make a little ball. We're going to give him an eyelid here in a minute. So now we put his little eyeballs in. I might need to add a little bit more black right there. Sometimes when you turn your project, you can see something that you didn't see. If you want, you can kind of draw the triangle of the cat's nose all the way to the top of his head if you want so eyeballs good 
Now we need two little pieces of the dark color that you use for his ears. I fold it, fold it, fold it. That is my eyelid. I don't know the technical term. I just folded it into a little, a little kind of rectangle. I'll do it again here for you. I don't know if that's in the way. So it's an easy project until you get to this face. And see, bring that down to the nose. You can see we're getting a little bit of relief felting going on here. So let's take the other piece. So it's just a little, we're gonna fold it in half, fold it, fold it. So I have like this little triangle with fringe. And I'm bringing it all the way over here to the nose part. It's kind of a happy cat. Remember how you put your eyelids on determines if he looks happy or mean. So like if I wanted him to look mean, I would go there. If you were if you were working with a black, like you want to make a black cat, you're gonna to need to use like a lighter gray or something to make the face stand out. So let's add a little bit here to build up his nose. You don't have to do this part. Just gives him a little bit more brown up here. I don't like how this ear is not very pointy. I don't know if you guys have been playing with the stuff called power wax, but you can power wax the ears too, and that will make them look kind of realistic. None of mine are power waxed. I was just sitting here thinking about it. All right, so now we have a little nose and we have little cheeks. If you need little dots in the eyes, two ways you can do it. You can do it with fiber can do it with a sharpie. Um, I'm going to do it with fiber today for you. I have done it with a sharpie. I am going to do something with a sharpie here in a minute though. So we have one. Take, make a little tiny ball. Remember less is more when it comes to putting in your eyeballs. some stray fibers here so I'm going to wrap them around my needle and stick them in. So take your sharpie I like to go along here with my sharpie just along the edge of the eyebrows. You can actually use black fiber and we'll do that. You can, you can fill in your mouth a little bit but this is how I make. I'm lying to you. No, this is how I make my, where my whiskers go. I just make three dots. It's better if you tap your Sharpie on your felting. Otherwise it will smear. So let's, let's put, take a couple fibers, very small amount and give them eyeliner. Kind of bring it out here. It's just a tiny little detail.
I know by now you guys are thinking, I thought she said this was going to be a quick one. It is a quick one. Let's look at that. We have a little cat face. Still, I'm not liking how this ear is coming out over here. Piece of my farm. Once you get the face you like, get out your little blush. Get in some rosy cheeks. And you're probably thinking, wait, you're missing the tail. I know I am. And so we're going to go down here. And put his tail up. I'm still not liking how big his head is. Okay, I'm back here working. I We had to take a little break because I sneezed. And meanwhile, I worked on his face just a little bit, making sure his eyes were pretty even. Still not sure. His pupils and his eyelids. And I, I worked through here, got this firmed up a bit. You can probably see how firmed up that is. You know, detail out these eyelids until you get them how you like them. And he's a happy cat. So now he needs his tail. So I use the dark, the dark fawn, or mouse, excuse me, I've been using mouse. And I'm gonna use my handy dandy skewer. And we are just gonna make, we're gonna wrap it. Remember to wrap, I'm probably going too fast for you guys. Wrap flat, wrap flat. Don't let go. Not yet. And wrap it on there. Let's let's tack it a little bit. So we can see that's not going to be fat enough. So I'm going to take some more. And I'm going to wrap it fatter. You're probably going to want it about a half an inch. I mean, it needs to be substantial. Nice, nice fat. If you want to, you can start with core, but I don't like to do that on the tail or on any body part that I'm going to. So let's do something fun on this one. I'm going to take a piece of the light color. And I'm going to draft it out. And I'm just going to make stripes like a candy cane. So that the end of his tail ends up kind of white, a light color. I'm poking the end around. Now I know I always say, felt this in, so the middle doesn't come out, but we're not gonna do that because we need this to felt it on. I'm just gonna gently slide the stick out. And then the tail is gonna go like this. Tack that end in. We want this end to be up here in the middle. Spread that fringe out. And we're going to tack these together back here. If I was doing this to, to mount on a card or something, I would probably use just some extra wool. But since this is an ornament, we want the back to look halfway decent. So we want just to felt this in. We want to give his tail some pokes too because he was just wrapped. He wasn't felted. Let's turn it around. I like the tip of the tail to come up here. Now he's starting to look like a cat. I know when the head is on and the tail is not, the body looks off size for the ornament. All right, 
cute. So look at that. We've got a little kitty. But you know what? We need to make him Christmassy. So first, we're going to make a hat. I'm going to set him aside for a second while we make the hat. We're going to do this red hat. And it ends up being... overall three inches tall and it ends up being about a half an inch wide this is up to your discretion so let's peel off the red this is not a red I carry in my shop I actually picked this nifty red up while I was at flock and fiber from a friend of mine I was like "Ooh, that's a good red how did you dye that she got it by dyeing yellow first and then red on top of that so I'm making a cone I'm going to go back down. This wool is called Corm from a sheep called breed called Cormo. It's a little bit softer than Coriadale. And it has little neppies in it. Nips are these little balls. Do you see those little balls? Makes it perfect for felting. So you can see I'm felting my little cone shape here while it's on the skewer. I'm gonna actually use my pen tool. So the thing about Cormo is it takes a little bit more to felt it than my regular Coriadale, but the color is so good. This one I am going to felt around where it's going to attach to the head. gently pull the stick out there we go and then I'm gonna help it felt this hat's gonna be a little taller than the other one I have there now I don't know if I remember if I taught you this that my needle stuck in let's felt that to the pad we're gonna twist this hat and we're gonna felt while we're twisting I think I showed you this before I can't remember a little fat right there. You feel like you have it felted so that it's not going to come undone. You're going to take your cat. Oh, actually, first we're going to put a ball on it. I have some the glitter merino. This is available in my shop online. This stuff is fun. I know I hate merino, but you know what? This is awesome stuff. It's merino stellina, which makes it super sparkly. I'm wrapping it on the stick. And then I'm gonna felt like this. This is the fast way to make a little ball. So this end where it was on the skewer, I'm gonna poke into the hat, the hat into the end where the skewer was, and then I'm gonna keep making it into a ball. This blend actually felt pretty good for these hats. It's still fly away, and you can see the holes where you felt. 
but you can rub those out of there. You can, you can hear that it's pretty firm. So when you wrap for a ball, you want to wrap it pretty tight. So we have a little ball on the end. Now we're going to attach it to his head. This is tricky. It's awkward. Don't stab yourself. So we're doing a cat ornament this week. I think next week we'll do a mouse ornament. So there's a couple things you might need. I'm going to get you going ahead of time. So you're going to need some 18 gauge armature wire for this little mouse. And then you need like three inch pom poms. I mean, we can, we can make a ball, but it's way more fun on like a, a sparkly yarn pom pom. It's just another little ornament I've been working on. So once you get his hat attached, you're going to take a piece of this sparkle merino, make it nice and smooth. We're going to wrap it on his hat. We're going to wrap it around. You don't have to felt this a lot if you do it tight. You felt it right here, pushing it down, and it makes kind of a brim. I'm in, kind of in between the sparkle and the red and hooking them together. There is our Santa cat. We need one more thing. I do have this bell that I put on this little piece of ribbon. This is like 12 inches. It's probably way too much. And I'm gonna tie it. In a bow. I don't know if this, this stuff's kind of slick. You might need a drop of glue. I like to take just a few fibers, get the bell where I want it. I also, on the other ones, did this just to make sure that it stays where I want it. And there you have it. One kitty ornament. The only thing left to do, which I did not bring out here with me, is to add a hanger. So you can add fishing line, just take it and put it through. I did twine on these because it's kind of rustic.